hope everyone is doing okay. Um, I'm really excited that we're in another edition of Scholars Live. Um, Scholars Live basically is just us interviewing scholars with diverse experiences. So people that have won fully funded scholarships, just learning about, you know, the tips and tricks, how they found out about the scholarships, how they applied, things that helped them, you know, and lessons for other people who also want to win scholarships. Today we have a special guest, um, Ezekiel, and I'm so excited that we have him here with us today. Ezekiel, are you there? I can't see your video on, but like, I'm so excited Hello. because it's someone... <laughs> You know that his journey is just so beautiful. Like it was once an aspirant like you, you know, consuming all the information he can get. I think you were even in one of these sessions, to be honest. Not but one, like, I've been in multiple sessions when you organized. <laughs> Not just one. Seeing that all your efforts, you know, came to came and um, resulted in a very beautiful outcome. And I hope that yeah. that will be the same thing else so yes i'm excited to talk to you how are you doing today how I'm doing are you well i mean i'm so excited so i was talking yeah. to a friend just before the session started that you know this session i'm about to do you know i was on this session multiple times listening to other scholars you know sharing their stories wow. telling us about their journeys you know and then today you know i'm on this session but this time around i'm the one trying to you know share my story and all so you know, about goals, you know, it's like a bug goal it's like a bug exactly exactly so i i hope to interview one of you guys listening today mm -hmm. once you win your scholarship and i hope that this session inspires you to put in the work as well so let's get right into it the first question that i have for you today um, I'm sure that a lot of us have the question at the back of our heads, really. You're basically in the UK, you're fully, I say UK, in the USA. You're I know you studied in the UK, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm used to in the UK, but you're yeah, in the USA, one of the top um, study destinations for like a lot of international students, and you, your master's is funded you know you're living the dream and i just want to know like a few years ago did you think that you were going to be here studying at the school you're studying the course you're studying for free and i also want to know that regardless of whether you knew or not like what do you think in your journey has prepared you for this moment that you're in uh, okay i mean my journey is quite long and i'm sure you know some of them but of course I'll be talking about it today. So the thing is, let me just go straight to it. I didn't know, like I didn't see it coming that, of course I knew, you know, just before my first degree, I knew I was going to travel out to have my master's. But then I think I, I knew so many things about UK more than US. I didn't know so much about US. So, you know, so I didn't see myself, I, think, I mean, at first coming to the United States was UK first. And then studying this program I'm currently studying. Look, if you had told me back then that this is what I was studying, I would say no. You know, my mind was on education, technology, you know, things like that back then. Because I applied to so many schools, you know, back then in the year. So that's to answer your question. I didn't see myself coming to the US to study this program initially, right? Because even as of 2019, most of the applications I did in 2019 were to social development, um, education, educational leadership, educational technology, and most of them were in, in the UK. Of course, I got admission, you know, to those schools, but you know, funding is the main thing, not, not just admission, you get so. You know. It's not just admission, though, it's guys. Not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I mean, admission is cheap. Like, I can say admission is cheap. Funding, is the main thing. Scholarship is the main thing. I mean, it's, it's you know, very competitive because of, you know, people like you, all the first class and all that, you know, you just go there, pack it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and get the old scholarship. So, yeah. And if I'm going to say what has really helped me was that where I am now, the course or the program I'm currently doing now, I'm passionate about it, but I didn't know, I didn't realize that there's a master's program, let alone that there's a funding for this kind of program. 
yeah i mean emmanuel knows i'm passionate about it it's what i've been doing for like five six years back in nigeria but while i was doing those things back then i was applying to other programs because in my mind i never thought that there's a program like this in the yeah, first place and then yeah. there will be funding for this program so what's really what is really the program for people that are okay so, what is okay 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 so my program is a master's in parks recreation and tourism management right so wow. i'm a recreational person like i love to do things outdoor you know i don't like it, it was from a personal experience where you there's a lot of things you can do just outside of the classroom you know visiting places destinations going to recreational parks you know and all those things do you get yeah so what i would say that has really helped me was the fact that I didn't I I didn't stop doing what I was doing because I thought there was no program for it. I continued. I mean, so mm. now you now understand that it wasn't because of the scholarship I was doing it. It was from a passionate place. I was I continued doing it, even though I was applying to other programs, but I was still yeah. doing it passionately. So it wasn't the fun thing I thought it was because I loved it. I was passionate about mm. it and I didn't give up. That's the first thing. The second thing is that I also developed myself personally. Whenever I hear about any conference relating to tourism, you will find me there. If it's going to be an online yeah. conference, you will find like me what? there. <laughs> if it was going to be a physical conference, I was going to register. Sometimes I don't attend all of them because of other engagements, but you would, if you ask me about that conference, I would know about it because I'm always looking for conferences. And even if there's a training, right, hmm. I would have registered for it or I've heard about it. Now, it not got so, it got so good because my friends around me, they know about my passion, my interest. So anytime they also find training and all those things that relates to tour guide, recreation, they will send it to yeah. me. But, ah, Ezekiel, no, I know Ezekiel is doing this. You know, let me send it to him. So I, I immersed myself in, you yeah. know, in the program, in the activities, the, pro, uh, the projects I was doing back then. So it really helped me. I did some online courses. Yeah. I did really? trainings. Hmm. I attended seminars, you know. Hmm. So those things I would say helped me to get to where I am because when I was sending yeah because when I was sending my application they they didn't mm -hmm. really dwell on my first degree. of course we'll get to that later emphasis was on mm -hmm. what have I been doing what are you currently doing exactly. and what do you want to do exactly that was what got me here not even my first degree because I know somebody mm -hmm. asked that question we'll get to that my first degree was different okay. from what I'm currently doing I did my first degree in mass communication right but now Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Different. So, yeah. I, I can say those are the things that you know really helped. Okay. Get to where I am now. Yes. I really, really love that. And I think that that's something that everyone here should really note. Um, I think it's also similar to myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One of the key reasons why I got the scholarship I got was not because of my undergraduate degree. Yes, I had a first class, but mm -hmm. it was a mm -hmm. course just like your creative industries, management and enterprise. People are like, oh, did you get that kind of funding? I'm like, it's because it. since I finished with me, all I have been doing is creative industry industries management and enterprise and so when i was able to apply so i think it's like a tip for everyone here like mm -hmm. whatever thing you're passionate about whatever course whatever it is you've been doing over time i think you should actually explore funding in that light or mm -hmm. if you have an, a course that you're interested in just like what ezekiel did try to develop yourself in that so whether it's events whether it's courses just Go there, don't let anybody tell you, oh, it's only these things, it's only this field. Just continue developing yourself because when you're applying, I think it's going to help you. Okay, so my next question for you, I think everybody here also has that question because we tend to see assistantship, scholarship, tuition, mm -hmm. tuition that, and some people tend to mix them up. I've even seen somebody like post on LinkedIn, oh, I just want a fully funded scholarship. And I checked it and I thought that it was an assistantship, right? So I'm just curious, like, enlighten us you had you want an assistantship what is an assistantship and you know how is it different from scholarships um okay so 
the the main difference uh, let me just put it this the major difference between assistantship and scholarship when you get a scholarship to study you don't have to work to get paid for it they'll cover your school fees your tuition sometimes they cover your flight sometimes they cover your living expense sometimes they give you clothes they give you books they give you mm -hmm. laptop you know but you don't have to work monthly yeah. To get paid <laughs> for your stipend. You know, just like this. He was, ah, no more. He protected us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you don't have to work every month to get your stipend. Yeah. But for assistantship, I mean, from the name, it means you are an assistant. Uh -huh. You are a graduate assistant, either as an admin assistant, either as a teaching assistant or a research assistant. So what it means is that some assistantship will cover your tuition and also give you living you know living expense they will cover your monthly expenses some okay. will cover your insurance health insurance some will cover your um, book insurance and all that but the difference between the scholarship is that every month you have to work before you get that stipend if you don't work you will not get that money of course they'll pay your school fees they won't send it to you they pay your school fees okay. but every month you have to work for it so in my case, I got to like two G's. I'm, I'm working as a research assistant and also working as a teaching assistant. I'll be working with two professors, one for research, one for teaching. But every month, I have to, at least every day, I have to do four hours with either of the professors. And every week, I must do 20 hours. And at the end of the month, you know, they put all of this together to pay me. Just yesterday, I did my time sheet already. Like I told them, the hours I worked for this week. You know, so at the end of the month, they pay me. So that's the difference. And the, the thing is, there are different kinds of assistantship. There are some assistantship that will only pay for your tuition. You know, they only pay for your tuition. They won't give you living expense. But in my case, I got the one who covered that covered my tuition and they also pay for my living expense and it also covered 98 percent of my health insurance so i'm just paying about say 60 dollars for my health insurance for um insurance that's all oh, more than a thousand about one thousand five dollars right so that's the major difference scholarship just go and ball go and study it's and not just go and ball no. don't mind me don't mind me don't mind me I'm just, study. i know i know i know masters is i not, understand you understand. yes i mean masters is a lot of work in uk in okay. the us it's a lot of work so you don't have to work just go and study and they pay your stipend but for assistantship you don't have to work that's the major difference okay so what i'm getting for and some you. scholarship sorry yeah will cover your flights Okay. Assistantship will never cover your flight in the US. Yes, you have to pay for your flight. You have to pay for your flight. Okay. Yes. And you have to pay for your first house rent before you start getting your stipend. So once you get your stipend, you can you know always Oh yeah. Okay. And they don't they won't pay you immediately. I think in some cases they start paying you three months, four months after. In some cases, they pay you a month after. But I know for scholarship. Okay, which one was it too? Because I'm sure there are people here that want to go for your own assistantship. In my <laughs> case, case, yeah. I've not even been paid at all since I came. Jeez. So I've been living, yeah. I've not been paid <laughs> since I came to the US. So I've been living on my, you know. <laughs> um, wait, how long have you been? I know you've not been here that long. So. Yeah, it's just been a month now. Okay, please. Before they start thinking that they are owing you money, that they owe you, please, guys. <laughs> You they know, will pay you. So what no, eventually they will pay you. They basically, pay you. is that assistantship is not just a grant, but it's like a job, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you work for them. They cover your tuition. There's no um, there's no condition for your tuition. They cover it fully. However, for them to cover your monthly expenses, such as your accommodation and feeding, you have to work. For me, that's like schooling and getting work experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of kind of work. work do some kind of jobs that they can't even put on their cv so regardless i do think it's beneficial and i think that yeah. takes me to my next question right mm -hmm. you're already there what do you think is a benefit of assistantship over scholarships because i'm sure there are people here that are like okay if they are not paying all these things so why should i do assistantship like what's the point so what do you think are the benefits so 
the first benefit is the work experience. You have you get to work with the university in most cases. If you're not working with the university, you're working with the lab. If you're not working with the lab, you're working with the professor. I mean, this is every for those who want to go into academic, and it depends. If you still want to also go into, if you want to work in labs that are not situated within the school, it's still very heavy on your CV. So the work experience you get, you know, is one. The second one is that for research assistants, you are able to publish papers. Mm. And that is strong. It's very hard so, to get. I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy to see that write papers. But when you're working with a professor and a research assistant, come on, you'll be giving access to resources. The professor mm -hmm. can help you. So you are able to write as many papers as possible. That will yeah. be beneficial for you if you want to do, say, your PhD or you want to do postdoc or you want to get a faculty position, right? Unlike all of this scholarship, you just go and study. Like, like a lecturer, assistant lecturer. Yes, lecturer. yes. Okay. They, they call it, they call it like, yeah, 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 yeah. They call it like faculty position here. Okay. So if you want to be a lecturer, you want to mm -hmm. be a professor. And you know, the process is very long, unlike in, the, in Nigeria. Once you have a master's, you can start teaching. They can employ it's before you get that position in the US. I mean, of course, you must have a PhD. That one is certain. And you must have written certain amounts of papers published in recognized journals before they can give you a faculty. So when you work as an assistant, you know, researcher, you are able to write as many um, papers as possible, you know. And then the work experience on your CV, it makes sense. So, and with that, I think another thing is that because you're working with uh, professors, you're able to get, um, how do I put it now? You're, you're building your network. You have access to the main guys in the industry who are actually doing the research, who are actually, you know, turning out the research, turning out the knowledge, you know, covering the knowledge gaps and all that. So you're building your network. So in that way, I believe assistantship is, you know, better. But if you just want to go and have your master's abroad, come back to your country. Scholarship is good. You just pay you. You know, you will have your time and you come back to your country. Do you get so? I get you. I think that makes a lot of sense. And for me, I really appreciate that work experience part. And mm -hmm. even the whole idea of having access to lecturers, trust me, I know the amount of impact that lecturers, you know, have on their students. Like I'm also a living example. I know that when you're close to lecturers and many opportunities beyond just academics that they give you access to, they basically yeah. take you on as their mentees. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're not just getting fully funded, you're also getting great networks and great working experience. Do you know what? Yeah. Sorry to cut you. They give you, you know, because as professors too, they have resources they use to publish papers. Professors don't just sit down and write their papers. They have resources that help them. They will give you access to this. Then you are also able to churn out as many papers as possible. It's difficult to sit down and write papers do the research, but they have resources. They have support systems all around. They will give you access to this. And then you can, you know, do as many papers as possible. Exactly. So I hope he, he, he has successfully sold assistantships to you. Yeah. <laughs> so free tuition, guys, free work experience, free network, a great pathway to become a lecturer or faculty person, great networks to guide you because you're going to a new country. You need strong people on your side, right? So those are some of the benefits of assistantships. Well, However, you need to pay for your flight. <laughs> yes. However, you might need money for flights right so yeah there's the flight part and i think the visa cost i think you have to pay the visa cost yourself yeah but it's like but... automatic after getting the assistantship that you will get the okay visa. good thank you for asking That's this, an important question. Question. <laughs> <laughs> this question is very important now when i was doing uk i understand uk very well mm -hmm. in uk you just need to get a admission mm -hmm. go and sleep submit your document you will get the visa I know that for sure. No, mathematical. Uh, but I mean, ninety percent. the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah, ninety percent. You will get it. That's certain. But yeah. guess what? For US, it's you can like get it. full funding. You can get scholarship, and you still deny your visa. That US is. I mean, 
when I realized, so when I got the assistantship, I was like, I don't need to worry about the visa and all that until I started the visa process and I'm like, wait, this is different. <laughs> so I started realizing. Wow. Started doing practice. Like I was wow. going for a job interview because the one single statement you make that does not align with your application, just forget it. You are good. Yeah. You are good. And then before you even get interview date, you need to do nine video to get dates. Before you go for your interview, you need to do nine <laughs> Don't care. I mean, we're all people. No, no, no. I no, guess thing... <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Because so, we are in the USA, so we are using you as our example. It works mm-hmm, for you. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. You work for me. I'm here. So, I mean, I was able to cross all of these obvious. I'm just trying to let you know what you're going to yeah. watch. You know, when, so let me let you know now. If you want to apply for US visa now, today, the earliest date you will get is July next year. So that's why I've been telling some people about those who want to apply for and they say start your application as early as possible. Like yeah. don't wait till January next year or February. Start like now. Now you exactly. can get your admission and your I know those who are in my school now, they got their funding every since September, November last year. Exactly. So they can they are able to, you know, apply for visa on time and you know and move on. Now, guys. Exactly. Start your application now. So you have to go through the process of looking for dates. So I joined quite a lot of date search group, Lagos and Puja, just to get dates. You know, we're praying for dates oh, yeah. to come out. And when dates came out, you know, I started doing practice. I, I did a lot of mock interviews, like fellow yeah. students who organized interviews for us and they would, you know, simulate the position of a view. Oh. You know, they ask us the questions. And the thing is, they don't they don't waste time on anybody. Once they ask you one question, you are not good. They deny your visa immediately, right there. So when they are asking you A, you are telling them B. They just deny you. What they want to know, there are three things they want to know when you apply for, especially for F1 visa. Because the visa you are applying for is called non-immigrant, and that what means is that you are coming back to the country. So when you mistakenly or intentionally it's tell them you are not coming back. Just forget it. it. Yeah. Forget it. So you have to demonstrate to them that yes, you are yeah. coming back. Yeah. Tell them you are able to pay for your school fees. When they see the assistantship, that's not a problem. Tell them you let them also know that you are coming back to the country and that you are an actual student. Yeah. You know, so they want to see all of these things in your so yeah. when you get the admission of phone, you don't just go to bed to sleep. Work another work has started to get dates and then to get interviewed. Okay. All right. I'm sure many people here will actually want to know like the step-by-step application process. So uh, just to make it easy, I'm going to start from the first step, right? So how did you find out about the assistantship? Like how can we find assistantship? Where are all of this information available? And where did you find yours? Um, okay, good, good question because you know I told you I've been doing this spark recursion for like years, so I'm always reading things about it. So, and to be honest, I started tilting towards research and advocacy for recreation for it because if you look at the space in Nigeria, we don't have so many professionals who do research and advocacy in the, in recreation space in So I was already tilting towards. That. So I was reading a lot. In fact, I worked as the program manager or the center manager at an institution. Their focus is, you know, they do research in the creative industry and also in the tourism okay. industry. So it was a very good, of course, I'll probably still talk about it later. It was a very good opportunity for me to know more about the industry in terms of research, right? And also some professionals. So how did I get to know about this assistantship? For me, I follow a lot of people like Faith on social media. So that when anytime they post, you know, things about scholarship, I don't, you know, there are some people when you make a post on social media, they'll be asking you a question. It's good to ask questions, but for me, yeah. I just pick that information yeah. and I do my own intense research. I go and find you won't find any of I'm not sure. When they post, I just pick it. 
and I do my research. So last year, because I've applied to so many scholarships in Canada and in the UK, the last one that I won't pay me the most was the Erasmus Money Scholarship. And the reason... <laughs> Which is not a perfect candidate for that, like, oh my yeah, God. Yes, so the reason I applied for Erasmus and the reason it paid me the most was because I found a course after that so many perfect. years yeah. that was perfect. Tourism, development and culture. Wow, so and they I, you for that. Exactly. <laughs> so the first the first year, they, they didn't even allow my application set before they sent me love letter. And the reason was because I didn't send in my test of English. It was a requirement. Okay. They didn't even look at my application, but just because I didn't send that, they didn't even look at my application. They just rejected it. That's okay. So, of course, I know a lot of people don't want to do test of English, but when it comes to scholarship, it is their requirement. There's nothing you can do about it. It is either you submit it or not. So I had to do a test of English the following year so I can apply to this Erasmus. Yeah. But guess what? Not all scholarships, so before they think no, all no, 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 not require, all scholarships. Not yes. all, but if you see that that is the requirement, if you don't have it, don't apply. Or if you want that scholarship by force, then do it. Like there's no back and forth. I don't. Some people actually apply for waivers, so you can also explore. Mm-hmm. I don't think they yes. can ever yes, yes. So okay. So, I mean, the following year they also rejected my application. In fact. For that program, they didn't pick anybody from Nigeria and it was, it was surprising. I was like, how come, are you guys trying to tell me nobody from Nigeria? Was because of, exactly, that time I was confident my application was going to be successful because to my, I mean, in my own perspective, I thought I put out a very strong application. I had certifications, I had training, had I had work experience. By that, I, my I'm like, so I was confident I was going to get it. I even, in my mind, I was mentally ready to get it. But guess what? Love letter. But just before that time, I said, you know what? Let me try US. Again. The reason I zoned out of US was because the the US, when it comes to many of these requirements, they are very strict until COVID happened. So after COVID happened, they softened on all their requirements, even GRE, GMAT, test of English that thing just dropped down all those requirements the following year 2021 they removed all those requirements gym they removed them so i said okay you know what let me check out us again so i started doing my research in fact when i started doing research in us again it was not in recreation because i still didn't realize that um, sorry yeah. to cut you, right? Because you keep saying doing your research. I'm sure there are people here that will be like, when he says doing your research, what does it mean? Is it that we should go on Google and be typing the course? Like, or is it that we should check on, like, how exactly were you doing? So when I say I, I do research, yeah. yes, okay. Google is the first point of call. I go to Google. And you know, when you put something on Google, you get like one million different results. So I was checking different things as much as possible. And again, I also go to YouTube. I put that statement or that stuff. I put, and there are tons of, I mean, I can't even count. There are plenty of videos now on scholarships, on assistantship. Even recently, I've been sharing some videos with some people on assistantship. Those were the videos I watched on YouTube and they really helped, you know, to guide me in my application. So how did I eventually find this one? Like I said, when I was even applying to, when I was trying to apply to some schools, it wasn't just, it wasn't recreation. I was not looking for something else. So I now found a tweet from a guy. His name is Sam the Great. He's in the United States. He's in the University of Florida. He's having his PhD. He does a lot of tweets. And that was how I read, I read through the tweet and was like, you can also get assistantship in some social sciences courses. Okay, I opened the tweet and I saw, I think I saw recreation. <laughs> when I saw it, are you telling me I can get assistantship? That was how the schools even listed. I checked all those, I mean, all the schools, I checked all their requirements. So I now doubled my search. I wasn't just doing US again, I was now doing US and Canada. So I, so I discovered that there are plenty of programs like that in Canada, but the challenge with Canada is that they don't have funding. You have to bring your money. 
And even if Canada would give you funding, they would give you like 20%, 30%, 50%, but still it wasn't sufficient. And then when I did my research for the US, I discovered that US is like the Babalo that is doing giveaway for everybody. They have funding for every single program they are doing. Any program in the US, there's funding for it, but it might not be as much as now. Those in chemistry, those guys are like the blood money people of academic. There's, there's a lot of funding. I mean, I've been saying it in anything care chemistry. Guys, yeah, there's funding. There's funding in it. A lot. I mean, some of them, when they give them the assistantship offer, it's always like time study of what other departments are collecting. Right. So that was how I found and I started doing my research. Okay. You know, so I think that exercises. Yeah. How you now found the program like so what what would you say is eligibility criteria like what us to okay i found the program i saw it what was the eligibility criteria for yours and what do you think are the general eligibility criteria for assistantship okay for mine um so it is different according to school some schools will ask you for mine for park recreation and tourism management some schools said it is composed i'm on bringing jerry I must wow. do test of English. I must do everything. I must even give them a copy of um, a, a list of a research paper that I've done. Wow. You know, <clears throat> I must present three references. You know, and then they would definitely collect the application fee. They won't leave it for me. I said no problem. So I started checking through different schools. And then I found Clemson University. Okay. Now, I read through their admission requirements and I realized that they waived GRE completely. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was waived, right? And then application, <laughs> then I, when I did more research, I realized that they could also waive the application mm. fee. I'm not sure. Um, I see Toby, if you can mute your mic. Yeah, I was about to even check that. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sorry, my apology. Okay. So, I found claims in the and I discovered that GRE was waived, and then application fee too can be waived. And guess what? Test of English can also be waived. Like, and then you, you are still eligible to also get the assistance, even if they waive all of these things. I'm like, oh, this is good. But then, and this is what I usually tell people. I just didn't go ahead and apply. After I got this information from the from their websites and also from the from the graduate office, I went to the program website because that's the interesting thing about many of the schools in the US. Each department they have a website and there's enough information you need to apply. Exactly. So I went to the yes, so I went to the program website. And I went to the faculty members. I didn't apply. I just went through their faculty members, all the professors in that department. I started reading about them. And the reason I was doing this was because assistantship, a professor will only bring you in to work with him or her because what you are doing aligns with what he or she is doing. So I needed to read through all of these professors to know what they were doing, if I was interested in what they were doing, and if anyone who was doing something similar, if I can, you know, reach out to them and they'll also be interested in me. Uh, because, you know, in the US, they have plenty of faculty. In a department, they can have up to 100 faculty members. I'm serious. Unlike in some schools, it's just faculty that will have a, a full faculty that will have like 50 and just short staff. I mean, they have plenty. So I started emailing them. So it wasn't just this school alone. I can't count the number of emails I sent out to professors. Other schools I sent. But this school, I focused on it. I sent mails to, I think, almost all, not all, almost all the faculty members in the department. Um, sorry to cut you, right? Because you said you sent emails. I'm sure there are people here that will be wondering, okay, what is the content of the email? Because you know that everybody here is like potentially a news. Yeah, yeah. Sure you're clear okay, right what did you say in the emails just for anybody that wants to follow your steps 
So before I applied, I sent, let's say, two stages of email. The first one was to the graduate school. And I was telling them that I am in church, sorry, to the department. I, I was in that way, I told them, this is, this is what I have. This is what I've been doing. And I'm interested in this problem. And I would like to ask, do you guys have application fee waiver? I asked for all the waivers I can ask for, application fee waivers. Do you guys have a waiver for test of English? Do you have waiver for, okay, the GRE, they didn't put it there, so I didn't ask for that one. And then I asked them if they are funding, it is important. If you guys don't have funding, I won't waste my time to apply. It is when you guys have funding. So they told me they have funding. And then I moved from there. That was the first stage of email I sent. Then the second stage was check out all the professors and I sent a very short, that's a mistake a lot of people make, very short email. Don't send long emails to these professors. They are very busy. Now that I have come to the US, I realize that that is why many of these professors, when it is summer, they shut down anything academic. They just travel. Because when they start academic work, I mean, imagine a professor teaching different levels and they have master students to still supervise, they have PhD students to still supervise, and they also have to maintain their own profession. You know their career they have to write papers to, they have to attend so they are busy you can't send them a long email they will not read it so the email has to be short and straightforward what did i do in my email i sent an email to a prof to the professor i told them that i read the research work you know when you read the work of any professor they are interested in what you are saying that this person has read my work. Oh, let me know. Maybe it is a review or something. So I told them that, oh, I read your, re, um, your research on this, 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 and I found it interesting. It looks good, right? Uh, this is what I've been doing. And I feel it is it aligns together. And the next, the last paragraph, I just said, are you accepting students for fall 2022? Are you accepting any master students? That was it. It is short. They know that you are looking for funding us. So they understand. You don't need to tell them plenty stories. So, and that was the email. And my current advisor, she responded. Okay. Um, before I go to before I go to the next, it's good to have a support system around you. You, you have you need to have friends to share. I mean, um Emmanuel Jolayem, you know, I have close friends around me that, you know, I tell them things about, so as it goes, of course, and then, and then my wife too. So after I sent lots of, yeah, I mean, she's very supportive. After I sent plenty emails to Professor, I, I, like I said, I don't know how many I've sent. One day I was in the office and I just told my babe, like, I'm tired. What is so mean? <laughs> you know, like I'm tired. I'm tired of sending in. Some professors will not respond to you. Some will respond and some will tell you that they already have a student. Some will tell you that they don't have funding. That's why I'm telling people apply on time. Students are applying now. So January or February, when you apply, you will hear that some professors have accepted some. And you'll be like, ah, when? They've actually accepted some people because those ones applied on time. So some will tell you that they already have students. So I told my baby, like, I was tired. And then she was like, okay, you know what? Just try it one more time. Just try it again. And, you know, I'm, I'm saying this because it was a motivation. The following day, I sent the email. And that was when I got the professor to respond to me. The professor responded. And immediately, the professor told me to set up an interview. We did an interview. I told them, you know, you have to be confident. I told her the things I was doing. I mean, she was happy, she was impressed. But you know why? That professor, although she's in the US, she does a lot of research in West Africa. And that was why I sent the email to her. Yeah. So because they found somebody too from West Africa, I said, no, well, let me, and, you know, I shot my email. She responded, we did the interview. Wow. And then she, on that interview, she told me, Ezekiel, I'm going to accept you as my master on that interview. Wow. Now, this is what I usually tell people. Don't just go and apply. 
make sure you are able to get the assurance of a professor before mm. you apply. You know why? When you apply, it is that professor that will Stand for behind you. doors when they are when they are making the decisions. The professor that will tell you, ah, "This one is my student. Admit and give funding to this person." Mm-hmm. When a professor gives you the award, there is ninety to ninety five percent assurance that you will get the funding because okay. they understand that if you're coming for masters and you need funding, they don't want. So they would help you look for that funding and also <laughs> help you to get the admission, right? Exactly. So, I think this is actually a thing with USA because there was someone yes. I was life with. He didn't even get an assistantship. He got a scholarship and he said one of the things that helped him in USA, I think he were even in that life, but one of the things that helped him in USA was that he contacted the graduate leader and said he wants to study it. This is what he's doing. And the person mm-hmm. gave him so much information on scholarship. Yeah, that's the thing. So I'm, I'm really thinking that that's a trend with USA. Yeah, USA. That's the way it works. I don't really advise people to just go and apply. Speak with the professor first. And let them tell you that you are said to you. Sometimes it's good to just go ahead and apply. Some people get admission and funding. But to be sure, like 90 to 95% sure, get the assurance of the professor and trust me, you will get the admission. Yeah, and also get the funding. Are you saying that you reach out to the professor, they reach out back to you, you guys yes. have like one conversation? And yeah, then yeah, yeah. We had a Zoom meeting. Apply to the university. Is that what yes, you so, Yes, yes. It was after I got assurance that she was going to accept me. Okay. I started my. Of course, all my documents were ready. So all because I've been applying, to, so they were ready. So I just packaged. Also, oh, I forgot to ask you, right? Do you have a first class degree? Because I'm sure there are people here that have been wondering: Is there a requirement of first class, second class? Do you think mm-hmm. that grade plays any part in this actually? So, if you want to get scholarship, it's good to have like a first class. It is very easy for you. I mean, scholarship now. Mm-hmm. But in my case, I don't have a first class. I have a second class, which is mm-hmm. good. A good second class, you know. So that was what helped me. But let me tell you this for free: when you want to apply in the US, your first degree. Okay, so this is okay. Let me put it this way: when you want to apply into a school in the US and you've left school for say five years, four years, six years, your first degree is not really what they think about. Those periods you were not in school, what have you been doing? So important. So if you can present what you've been doing, you know those periods you were not in school to them, and it, it makes sense to the program you want to do, they will bring in. So because in my case. My first degree was in mass communication. It has nothing to do with tourism management, recreation and part. So it was far apart. And that was why my the the what's it called now, the trainings I did, certifications I did, the conferences I attended, then I had work experience up to five to six years. Wow, okay. Yes, because I started I think I started in 2016, it was officially registered in 2017, and then I've been doing it offline. It has a online. brand that is in the tourism industry, just yeah. for clarity, right? Yeah. So those tours and related recreation, recreational stuff, okay. Exactly. So are you saying that for people that don't have like the typical grades or maybe they feel like their first degree is different, one way that they can boost their chances is from their work experience. And yeah. So- now, yeah, I was going to share about the story of a lady. She's, all, I think, it's on YouTube. She's quite popular. She had third class. Wow. Okay. She's in the US on assistantship. Nice. Yeah. So, if you understand that, okay, you have a two-two or you have a third class, it's not the end. It might take you time. It might not happen like next year or this year. It might take you time. So, what you're going to do is plan yourself properly go and get probably a pgd if you can do as many trainings as possible online courses online programs go to conferences go to trainings now all of this will speak for you when you want to do this application they would not entirely dwell on the program you got six seven years ago they believe that this person has actually improved added more value to his or herself, you know, so you'll focus on those things. But when it's scholarship, scholarship will put into 
they will, I mean, they will have to consider it. That is why you don't see a lot of people with two two top class get. Okay, some of them get like yeah, Erasmus, no. Erasmus, right? But yeah. that's because yeah, they have get PGD. Get yeah, Even get too. As well. yeah. yeah, but you if you look at those people, yeah. yeah. And even for me as well, yes, I had a first class, but my first degree was in history. It was exactly creative industry. So it was well, you had my work experience, yeah. you had training. So I had like five yeah. years work experience in history. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. they were like, okay, yeah, you have a first class, but do you have anything that shows that you care about this? So I really like doing this. Exactly. So if you if your CGP is good, that's one thing you can. That's like an app you can do. Do a lot of trainings, attend conferences. There was even a conference I attended earlier last year. In that, it was an online conference. Then I discovered that they didn't have like a community. They just did a conference. In that conference, you know what I did? I just suggested that we should form a community. I was not even part of the organizers of the conference. And guess what? We started a WhatsApp community that is international. Different people from different parts of the world in the tourism space, you know, they joined on that WhatsApp and conversations was going on. They had convers different conversations and it was one of the things I included in my application, yes, because I started that platform. I knew that was coming, like, pretty. Exactly. It's so I events or anything and it's powerful guys exactly i mean so when you when you tell them that you're organized you have a platform that different people from different parts of the world are. i mean that's a plus to your application it means you are valuable so that's that's what what it means to them yeah okay so back to the application process right so after contacting and dialoguing with the professor for so the actual school application process so what were the documents you submitted did you write a personal statement did you submit like a research just walk us through like the documents you need to yes yeah, so um so good my professor also gave me application few ever she was she wanted me to come wow um, i mean so the thing is the thing is, my application process was not stressful because we were doing it. It was like the professor that was, we were doing it together. If there's any challenge, I'll email her. Trust me, she responds fast. I mean, so I submitted statement of purpose. Yeah. They will tell you 500 words. So now one thing I want to mention about statement of purpose is that most schools have like a requirement for the kind of SOP they want you to submit. So don't use one SOP for different schools or different applications. Preach. <laughs> sure you get. So I read about what they wanted with their statement of purpose. And I just gave them the information they wanted to read, to see. Not just because the professor has said, oh, don't worry, I will accept you. Mm -hmm. But you also need to put in a very good application right and then after i wrote my statement of purpose i gave it to a couple of friends to help me to reveal because they will help me see some things i'm not seeing you know and which was really helpful so i submitted statement of purpose i submitted my transcript i submitted my first degree certificate so for those who have not gotten their transcript i know it's an issue because of asset strike and all that i got mine a long time ago immediately they informed us not because okay of course i was applying to schools then but immediately they told us that our transcript was ready i went straight to my school and got it straight up you know so and i have the official copy myself so i use it to apply so I submitted my transcripts, my certificate. I submitted, you know, um, they asked for two references. Okay. And then they said I can also, because I've stayed long out of school for a while, they said I can also submit a professional reference. Now, this is what I do. I was still keeping in touch with my professors, with my lecturers in school. Mm -hmm. I was chatting them. There was one uh, lecturer who would talk, we just gist, random gist, talk, talk, talk. My HOD, I was, we we're always reading our chats on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. My HOD, he was my project supervisor in school, so I was, I still kept in touch. We we're talking. In fact, sometimes I'll offer to just buy them drink. 
you know just let me just buy you something yeah but some of them will say no mm-hmm. some of them no while i'm not you know you're like my child you know so those were the things i was doing to me to keep in touch with my professors it is not when you want to apply you not chat to your professor they will not respond because they don't even know you yeah. And because I was also active in my department, like it was, I mean, they know me in my department, it wasn't a problem. So, so yeah, I got to references. Now, I got one from my HOD. Okay. And then I got one from someone I work with. He was like my boss. We've done lots of projects together. So I told him he was even excited and happy. So this man, anytime I go to him, He's always ready. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, let's do it. So I just gave him and he did the reference for me. Some of your lecturers might be so busy, they'll tell you to do a draft. And for my lecturer in school, I had to do a draft him because he asked, asked for it. And because I left school for like five, six years, I need to let him know what I'm currently doing because it's, I'm not going for a master's in communication or my master's. It's entirely different. So I had to do that job to let him know that this is what I'm currently doing now. Right. So I submitted that. What else? Now they because they were also, considering they don't even ask you to do a draft. It's always good to send them like a guide on what yeah. you've done. So that they don't just write two or three lines. Because I've seen Ah, yeah. uh, that's bad. <laughs> I had a rector that was an emeritus professor and just wrote four lines. Faith is such a smart student. She was the highest. Bye. That was it. That so would not like, go anywhere. <laughs> so if you can send them a guide or maybe even the link to the reference page or whatever, yeah. I think that let them know what you're doing, you know, if they don't ask for a draft. But yeah, continue. So in my own school, they don't ask for the letter. There's a link. They send a link to the lecturer's email. They will have to fill form wow. and upload the reference. I mean, thank God for relationship. You, you really helped. Right? So that's for reference. Okay. Sorry. Another thing they asked for is because they were considering me for a research assistant role, they wanted to know if I can write. So they asked for a sample, a research, just an article or something I had written. And you know, what really made it easy for me to submit that was because I was working where we're doing research that was related to tourism, you know, and creative industry. So I just submitted what I've written, you know, so it was really good. And what else did I submit? I think those were the documents I submitted. GRE was waived. I also submitted test of English. Although they waived it for me, I submitted because I had it, so why not? So I submitted that. What else? I think those were the documents I submitted, and then in two or three weeks, I got a response from the admission office. So the assistantship did not come immediately, okay. And the reason was because my professor got a grant actually, so it wasn't the department, so she was waiting for the final, you know communication and, and obviously for the grants to come in and you know once they once she got that i got my assistantship offer signed all the contracts and then i got my i20 i20 is the document they'll send to you by cars for those in uk so i20 is the document they'll send to you to apply for your visa in nigeria so i got my i20 and then the <laughs> the journey for visa now started. I thought I thought I was just going to sleep after the whole thing, but then yeah. there was another struggle. But thank God. So yeah. Okay. So um, I think you've actually walked us through the process of the application. Um, I just... So that's for me. Okay. And then for general assistantship, for those in science, you might have to do GRE. You know mm-hmm. why? It is competitive. They will tell you they waived it, but because you need to get ahead of the other hundred people that apply that might have good CV than you. Once you submit that GRI, it's going to you know, take a step further. 
And that's what I advise, especially when you're at the sciences. They might waive all these things for you, but if you have them, if you have the money, do it, do all these things and submit so that you can get ahead, you know, of other people but that are applying. Don't have the money. Yeah, if you don't have the money, please, by all means, ask for waivers and all that. Okay. What's well, a you good for for? What do you think are other ways you can boost your application? Yeah, it's through your work experience. Okay. And then any if, any if you're saying you're interested in doing a program, the more they should be able to see what you have done. Don't just say you want to. What have you done in that program? If it's an article you had written, mention it in your... If it's a volunteer work you did, mention it. If it's work experience, mention it. Anything you have, anything, the count it, anything you have done towards maybe advocacy, to support the program, to add to the body of knowledge, even if it's a YouTube video, a YouTube channel that you have, let them know, you know, and put it there. So. Those I things can I, actually help. I always tend to say, well, even on the YouTube channel, when I speak to people, like if you say you're passionate about something, it shouldn't mm-hmm. be happy. You need to show your passion. Yeah. yeah. Like I need to ask you, even beyond the course, I already knew that it's tourism you are going to study because I can see everything around me speaks tourism. <laughs> has to show you can tell somebody oh i care about let's say agriculture well you've not done anything in industry your so degree then you don't care about it no they want people that have already started working on it no matter how small that they can scale to the next level i think that's what i think is very important so show not just tell your passion show it right they don't expect you to have done a project by world bank exactly. Do, even if it's just one thing you have oh. done they want to see that you say you're interested what have you done? That's that's the logic. You feel that it's what have you sure you get <laughs> so somebody um, asked if a good year is I think 300 yeah. is good. anything anything close to 300 above, you know. But anyway. Okay, so um what do you think are possible reasons why people get rejected based on your experience? Because you're there right now. I'm sure you've gotten like from inside. So so, so there are quite a lot of things I might not be able to exhaust. But one thing that came to my mind is when you apply for a program, you know you didn't make it. Right. There's no magic. They would definitely just like I said concerning about Erasmus, it was there that you need to submit test of English. What I submitted, <clears throat> what I submitted as a substitute to that was like a proof that my first degree was taught in English, but they said, if you want this scholarship, present to us test of English. Now, if you don't meet the requirement, most of the time, there's no going back and forth. They reject your application. They didn't even read my application. Just because I did not submit that, they rejected it. Right? So once you don't meet the requirement, you know, another thing is when you turn in poor application, when it's not strong, when you you know, I've read some SOPs. Even me, like I'm not the graduate office. If, if I'm the one, I won't give you admission with the SOP you submitted. You can't do something that is shallow. You can't do something that is not that doesn't have depth, that doesn't demonstrate that you are passionate about it, that doesn't demonstrate what you plan to do. Because when you're passionate about something, you should have future plans for it, right? And we must see what you have done. So. If your application lack, you know, some of these things, definitely, you know, they probably will reject you. These are some of the things. I mean, there are quite a lot of other things that would, you know, requirements is good. Always read when you want to apply. Make sure you go through all the requirements. In you know, in those places, they mean everything they put. They are not just putting it there because they want to put it. I mean, everything, single thing they put there is what they consider to give you. And if you do not meet up with it, they probably won't give you the admission. I think it's actually quite, it corroborates what um, David said. So in the last Scholar's Life, we had like an interview with David, it's the postgraduate admissions director at UBA. Okay. And he said when he's going through applications, once you don't meet the basic requirements, it doesn't even open it, it just- Exactly, that's it. it. So yeah, like- Because there are plenty of applications to review. 
there's so much to read so they are trying to even look for ways not to read your application so if you don't even qualify like and that's why i always tell people like if they specify that they want first class don't bother don't <laughs> Class, don't bother. There's so many opportunities for you if you don't have a first class. Why bother apply and waste time on something that is saying they want first class? Do you get what I'm saying? So I think that corroborates what you're and saying. In the US, sorry to add this, in the US, there are more than 4,000 schools. 4,000 schools cannot reject only. Are you that bad? You're not that bad. That's they can't, there are more than 4,000 schools, you know, so try different options, try different schools. Um, it seems like Toby wants to ask a question. Please, can you just make it really brief? Um, because... You can put them in the chat box. I, I can see it, then I would answer That's them. Telling him, because we have like some other questions here. Yeah. I need to read out. Because I feel like it might take a while. Even if you mm-hmm. can, even if you drop like a lot, it's fine. There's no mm-hmm. issue. Okay, so let's just go into the audience questions, right? Um, mm-hmm. I had a couple of questions that you guys typed in the chat um, when you guys were filling the form. So I think one of them was, okay, I think you already answered this, but you can just reiterate for people that came late. Mm-hmm. Fully funded, does it include visa and flight tickets? So no, 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 no. A fully funded assistantship will not pay for your visa. They wouldn't. So the thing about U.S. is they only pay for your flights. It is only when you get scholarship. And they pay. Even with scholarship, it is when you come to the U.S. Most of them give you the money, not when you are still in it. Unlike some programs in the U.K. Okay, when you win some scholarship before you travel, right? Yeah. So exactly. They already booked it. I didn't even know anything about the process. They just gave me, oh, this is the date you are traveling. This is your ticket, and that was it. Exactly. That's what. It- fully funded scholarship scholarship tuition fee there's 100 percent tuition but they say fully funded in the uk well, i don't know about us obviously from what you're saying us is different but in the uk it tends to cover everything right yeah for the us most of the fully funded assistance does not cover your flight wow. okay. it doesn't cover your visa you have to pay for your visa because it is not the school you're paying to so you pay for your visa, you pay for your flights. What's the typical cost of the visa? Obviously, flights we can find out. But... Uh, I think the visa is now sixty-eight thousand or about seventy thousand okay. US visa. Naira, because somebody yeah. thinks. Yeah. And you can only pay that in a GT bank. Okay, that's for Nigerians. So please, that's not Naira. Is like um, how many dollars Naira against it? I think it's like six forty, six sixty. It's okay. fluctuating. There are people here that are not Nigerians. I don't want them to think that it's sixty. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Please. Don't so don't... you need to find out the cost of US dollar in your your country. Okay. So the next question here is, um, professors are not replying my email. Mm-hmm. Why navigate that? And so it's probably because you're not sending the right emails to them. So there's a template, there's a way you send emails to professors and you actually open your email and read it. You would probably not hear from a professor because you're sending a bad email or they don't have funding or they don't have any space for you. Not that because not because your application is bad or something. So a very good way to get attention from a professor is make sure your email is very short. Introduce yourself first line. Second line, Tell, go and read about a professor. Don't just go and send them mail that you want to get funding from them. No, they need to know that you're interested in their work. All the professors I sent to, I read their work. Sometimes, I usually open their papers, read through their papers and look for something interesting in their paper and add it to my email. So they will know that this person is not just saying you read it. I actually read through it for this person to bring out. But most of the time, I just go to the conclusion. If I can't read all the paper, what they recommended, you know, I had it to the body of the email and tell them you've read their paper on this and you find it interesting. Sometimes you can even suggest if they plan to work on any research that covers this area. And then the next paragraph, which is the last one, just tell them, are you accepting master student or PhD students for any for foreigners? And then the subject of the email is also important. You can just put prospective PhD student 
of the prospective master student and the subject of your email. Make sure it is short as possible. As short as possible. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you. That's so clear. Um, another question that someone sent is okay, but I think you've answered this. But for people that came late, what class of GPA can access the assistantship? Okay, um, for those who can access the assistantship, first class can access it, second class upper can, second class lower can, and from experience, the third class can also access assistantship. But you don't just apply with your third class result alone, you need to strengthen it with programs that you have done, with uh, probably even if you've done the research work, you can add it with trainings, with online programs that you have done, volunteering and work experience. That way you can strengthen your third class, you know. Yeah. Because the thing is, my school, they are open to a lot of international students. You are applying with thousands of, even students that are more qualified than you, right? And then you expect them to just give you admission because of what? So your application must be strong. Okay. There's a question for you before I read the next question. From your point about asking professors for assistantship, can one access it for taught masters instead of for research masters? Okay, so in the US, they only give assistantship to for a taught masters. The most of the time in my school, this program I'm doing, there's also a thought aspect of it, but it's done online, but they will never give you assistance for that. Most of the time they give to um, research masters, but of course in some, like I said, most of the time, you only get assistance when you're applying to the research aspect of the, of the program. So the percentage of those they give me for thought is very minute, not so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, can anyone who won the assistantship travel with his or her family? Yes. Like, yes. You know why? The, the visa you apply, you would apply for would be like F1 visa. And guess what? They made a provision for F2 visa because studying in the US for masters is two years. In for PhD is five years. Wow. And they know they know you didn't just drop from heaven. You have family members, you have your wife or your husband, you have your children. So they made a provision that you can come to the US with your family. But this is it. If you're on F1, your F2 cannot work in the US. Okay. Wow. Anyone telling you they are working, if they get them, that's mm -hmm. a crime. They probably would deport them. Yes. According that's to the US law. Situation if you are married. Exactly. Go. So I mean for the U for the UK, you can go with your spouse the and they can start working. Yes, and earn a lot of money. And earn enough of money, you know, to support yes. the family. Why do that? Exactly. But in the US Wow. They are believing that this visa you are coming for is a study visa. Don't forget, before they give you this visa, they want to know that you have the money yeah. to study for this program. So they believe that for you to leave other countries and say you want to come to the it means you have the money. Not that you want to come and work, you have the money to come and study in the US. Actually, this, do you know the funny thing? It's actually the same with the UK too. If you mm -hmm. that you're coming to work and pay your studies, that's the end. Exactly. As well, I think for most. Exactly. Okay. So, you have the money to come and pay, right? So, when you tell them that you want to bring your wife, what they usually ask is show us a bank statement that you can take care of yourself wow. and you can take care of your wife, right? Okay. And when you go for this interview, they will ask you, "Do you have the money? Can you pay?" They will ask your wife. And you know, you ask your wife, why is it that your wife or your husband wants to resign and follow you to the US? Why? You want to leave your good job here? So that's why a lot of people don't get the US visa is actually difficult. Which yeah. I mean it's recently I discovered like it's it's a big, big bottleneck. Right. So it's possible for you to go with your spouse, but you need to both of you need to sit down 
and look for where the money will come from. Look for what you are going to tell them. Right? That one of the things people tell them is that you're going to support your husband or your wife because you won't support them emotionally. That's the truth. In this part of the world, they value mental health. Yes, they value mental health. So if you tell them you want to support your husband emotionally, psychologically, to set down and so that he or she can focus on the program, they believe that. Okay. Even because of that, they can approve the visa because US is big on mental health. Anything, they, they are big on it. So through that means, you can bring in your wife. Another thing people do is that when they go, when they come into the US, they apply for their husband or wife to also get admission and funding. So mm, the spouse can also come in. And I think that's even the best way because I can't imagine being married and then I study for two, three years and my spouse just comes and sits down. It's difficult. It's difficult. And even me, because would I be the income for two of us? And how much is even the money they are paying you? It is, because according to them, they are paying you stipend. They are not paying you salary. Stipend is just to get by, not to yeah. live large. And then I know a family, the husband has been here, but luckily the wife also got a PhD. Okay, perfect. And additionally, she got a scholarship. Perfect. They have four children. They are here in the US. And you know, I know why I mean I know why a lot of people want to come to the US. Yeah. School is free of charge until you get to the university. From primary, second, you don't pay a dime. Well, in my state, so yeah. even students of like people on student even study, in, in term, uh, anybody. Okay. And so the, that's why the US is big. I mean, that's why they are strong. They see value in people and they, they want to invest in it. So that when it's time for them to get, of course, because they've invested in you, you also fight for them. You would, you know, contribute and all that. So. Okay, that makes sense. So that's a very huge consideration if you're married. I know in the UK your mm-hmm. spouse work full time and any lot of money. Even right? even if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, there is a provision in the UK that you can okay. bring them. You don't have to be married. Yeah. Work full time, guys, and you can also work. I think for twenty hours or something. Okay, mm-hmm. the next question. Okay, I think there was a question in the chat before I read the next question. Um, from Victoria. What are the fully funded scholarships in the US? Because Fulbright scholarship is the only one I know and they have age restriction and they require research work. What if I haven't done any research? I so, I this is, so, the, <laughs> so this is what I usually tell. Nobody will hand you this thing easily. To be honest, if you're really interested, you will do your research. And one of the things about US is that you can get a scholarship you didn't apply for. Yes. Exactly. This this family I just told you that got a PhD. She didn't apply for it. They just told her you've been selected for this scholarship and they'll give her the money. So There's even a guy we interviewed in this scholar's life. It's the same thing. He just applied and he got like five different scholarships. But please continue. Let me look for the Exactly. Link. Yeah, exactly. So I can't tell you from the top of my head that this scholarship applied to this. Yeah. There are like more than 10,000 scholarships in the US. Some of them, they don't announce. It is when you apply for admission and they realize that, oh, this is a very strong application, then they you know, consider you for the scholarship and they give it to you. So you need to do your research, really. A lot of people are already on Fulbright, so I don't, I don't even, I wouldn't even recommend. I mean, that one is extremely competitive. Yeah. Plenty, 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 plenty. So, yeah. So, I think that the major issue is a lot of people think of scholarships alone from the point of oh, Erasmus, Chivning, Fulbright. They do not they realize want, they want free flights now. They well, flight they do not realize that there are actually scholarships that are not as popular as these scholarships that don't have like such huge, huge brands. One of the best places to find scholarships is on the university website. They give you a lot of information about yeah. mm-hmm. And then some of them already have their own specific scholarship. So I feel like, and also like you said, reaching out to the professors is also very helpful. But if it's taught masters that you want to study, you have to check the university website one by one and ensure that you put in your best. But there's a lot of scholarships 
for the USA. A lot of people get scholarship they didn't apply for. They just, yeah, they just get a meal. You just need to dig deeper, trust me. But the university pages are a great place to start, even for the yeah. UK and other countries. Just go and, to their pages. And the thing is this. Well, for most of the universities I've checked, their website, there's a different page they dedicated to scholarship, funding, um, finance. Okay, they, some of them will call it financial aid and funding. That's where they will list all the scholarships and all that. So you need to check for... So when I check a university, I check their departments. Once I finish checking, I check if they have money to fund my program. If they don't have, I don't waste my time. I just move on. Yeah. So that's like so important. Um, I'm sure there's another question. Okay, before I find this thing, um, someone says, what are the chances of getting fully funded scholarships if one's intended course at MSc level is different from what was studied at their first degree? I think you've answered this already, but you can just yeah. I mean, you have you have a chance, you have a big chance if you have work experience. If you have training experience, if you have done projects, if you have done online programs, if you have written about it, if you have contributed about that program you want to do, there are big chances of not just getting admission, you can also get funding for it. So, exactly. And because not just the admission alone, and this is why a lot of people also get their visa denied. Once you cross admission, this, I mean, those guys at the visa office are professional, they are psychologists. When you say you your first program was in accounting, and luckily you were able to get a master's program in computer engineering, they, want to, they will ask you why. Why are you moving from accounting to computer engineering? They will ask you, how did you get it? You know, so you need to be able to answer some of these questions with you know work experience and all that. You can tell them you're passionate, you can tell them you have a pro project you worked on and because of that project it shifted your mentality or impacted you and this is why you want to focus and this is what you plan to do in the next five years. See I'm really learning a lot from you today and I'm sure that everyone is learning a lot. So thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. Um, another question is, is it always advisable to declare that one has a Nigerian master's already as such an important question? For admission, it's an advantage. Hmm, okay. For visa, you need to, <laughs> yes, they, because when yeah. you want to do the interview, they'll ask you, you have a master's, why are you going for another master's? If you tell them because they are passionate, they will deny you. You need to let them know you have a master's before and why you want to, you know, go for this master's program again. So for admission, it's good. Even for admission, you probably would just get straight PhD, sir. You know, sure. or easily get a master's and funding. But you need to prepare a very good story for them when you want to go for your interview. So the reason you're doing the second master's is because you want to cover this gap or where you're currently working there's a provision for a new department and you need somebody to take over the leadership of that department and you want to go for this program so that when you come back anytime you are speaking with this they want to hear that you are coming back sometimes when you finish telling your story and they hear you are coming back they just approve your visa you know so they call that stuff on time when you want to do your visa interview. There should be something that is calling you back to Nigeria. There's something that ties you back to Nigeria. That once you're done with your master's, you can easily come back. And then this is an act. If you have a business, that is a very good home tie for your US visa interview. If you have a personal project, it is a good time because their belief is that you can't run away and leave your project. Yeah. Exactly. And also, even if you're working too, you can use that at one time. So many people will tell them that they only go leave and all those things. You know, so. Okay. So I really like this question. There's a question here that I really love. And it's kind of like you to require a motivational address from you. <laughs> but yeah. I, I aspire to aspire. Yeah. 
yeah because i really understand where the person is coming from and i hate to i know how it feels to be rejected <laughs> so the person said i'm lost at this point i have tried to apply for scholarships so many times with no positive results and it seems like i'm not doing it right at all how do i deal with multiple rejections like understand where you are it you help me here <laughs> so the thing is for me to have 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 collected plenty of love letters I think it is away. Like plenty from 2018, 20. There was a time in love letters. It means rejection. Rejection, right? yeah. So in 2018, I got a fellowship. I got to the semi-final of oh. that fellowship. I needed just. I did the first interview. I scaled. I needed just one interview to get that scholarship. To get that fellowship. Fellowship is not scholarship. To get that fellowship is also another aspect of funding, but we didn't really talk about it. Yeah. So to get that fellowship, and in my mind, I thought I was going, but they gave me love letter. It was very painful. Wow. But it didn't I didn't stop because mm. I was I had to to be honest, at some point I paused because I needed to think about this thing very well so that <laughs> breakfast will not be like a regular food for me so and yes i mean the rejection was too much it's hard. And, i know it's hard. i mean and it's bad up and don't do it again so i, I just i just i just sometimes i just man up and don't cry because i've collected plenty of rejection right. so i mean i mean cry. sometimes i try not to cry because it's so painful because yeah. sometimes you're putting a lot of effort into it now one of the motivations i probably would give you now is the fact that with all the rejections I've gotten, mm. you need just one yes, and you'll be sitting where I'm sitting now. And you can only get there because you didn't give up. Mm. That is one. And then you need to sit down and think about what you're doing wrong. You probably are doing something yeah. that is not, you know, that will probably not get it to you. Yeah. You know, so you need to re-strategize and yeah. plan. Or speak to somebody who has gone ahead of because for me. I was able to learn from those who had gone ahead of me. They showed me the way. The thing about this thing is, if you follow, if you follow a path, you will get it. It's just a matter of time. If you follow some tips that they share, follow yeah. instruction, you will definitely get it. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, it's already yeah. It, the fact that you're even in this live session. Yeah. It's already it's showing your resilience. Exactly that you didn't give up like this as well. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you should have like uh, friends around you. You know, in 2018, 2019, a lot of my friends, you know, they got the scholarship and the travel. It was motivation to me. One yeah. got in Russia. I was, when, when I finished my application, I'll send it to him so he can help me with those in Canada. You know, it was motivation. Now, these my friends have been able to do it. I can also do it. You know, I won't stop. I will just continue, you know. And then, of course, like I said, I also did personal development. Yeah. Then, so, do you know what? I actually went back to read some of my applications too. Yeah, like I was in the issue. I won't. I won't. I also. I won't also give myself the <laughs> because there was one SOP I went back to read. I, was, I could not believe that I wrote that SOP because I'm like, wait, is it, did you actually expect to get like a scholarship with this SOP you wrote? You know. So sometimes you need to, Whoa. yeah, you need to, you know, talk to people, let them help you with your SOP. You probably, you also need to improve yourself, grow. I, I mean, I did a lot of training. I read, I mean, I did a lot of things. I met with professionals. I speak with professionals. I speak with veterans, those who have gone in my field. I, I, I associated myself with, um, you know, with those who have gone ahead of me. Before I even got my job, my boss, my former boss, I found her on LinkedIn. Mm. And because what she was doing was what I was doing, I sent her a long message. But she's a busy person. She didn't even read the message. Somehow, I got to know about the vacancy in the company. She didn't even realize, she didn't She didn't read that message. So it wasn't because of the message I sent. But somehow, you know, I was still able to get the job. So you need to associate yourself with people, improve yourself, attend seminars, 
You know, I've met a lot of people who have also motivated me. I mean, great guys, amazing guys, first class people. Those people, they, they are always proud when they are applying for my scholarship. <laughs> Because they will consider them first, you know. So because I didn't have a first class, my roommates in school had a first class. Because I have a first class and I was rejected on my first try. Yeah, first try. Yeah, what, what happened to your second so, try? Because people just said, say, oh, first class. <laughs> like that. My roommate back in school, exactly, it was on first class. And then in 2018, it got this call. It got, um, what's this other scholarship in the UK, Commonwealth Scholarship. Yeah. Before he left in Nigeria, he sent him money that ran into millions. He motivated me. You know, he paid his, he paid for everything. Was big before he left. You know, I'm like, ah, this is interesting, though. Know? You know, so I also didn't stop. I also didn't stop. Just that's the thing. I, I don't know if it's good to. Okay, it's it's a cost word. I'm not going to say it. Like now, we we'll give up. You know you know what you can't just give up you just have to keep trying re-strategize look at what you're doing if it's not good enough you know follow those who know road that's the thing there are a lot of guys like faith on youtube on linkedin on twitter i have them i follow them a lot so i read many things you're not no. you're wrong. You're exactly wrong. the template the template i used for my cv the template I used for the two emails exactly. was different from what I was sending. This template, uh, they've, uh, they've worked for a lot of people because it is short, simple, and straightforward. Don't take plenty of stories. They will not, they will realize that this one is not a good writer or this person is not serious. So you need to, um, yeah. Okay, so for me, what I'll say to the person, um, obviously, I only applied for scholarships twice. But the, and See the funny thing, I've learned wait because it's not like I'm doing it. <laughs> but I have learned wait first. Okay. The template he actually explained it, guys. So he did actually explain it. But I'm sure if you just type on Twitter templates for professor and um, emails to professor, trust me, you see a lot of templates on Twitter. Can I mention someone's name? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Mention. There's this. There's this professor. Is is I think he's doing his postdoc in Canada. Um, Dr. Ibala Jubi, go and look for him on on Twitter. It was the template he shared. I picked the template and I edited it to suit what I wanted to do. And I started getting responses from okay. from professors. It works like magic. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. A lot of people have taken those templates, they've used it and it worked for them. I think I'll find it and maybe email people. That yes, I can also share. I can also share with you. Share with me and I can email yes. you. Exactly. Okay, so for me, all I'll just say to the person was, um, the truth is, there are many there are many factors, right? For me, mm-hmm. obviously, the first time I applied for Chevlin, I got rejected. Mm-hmm. Though I was long listed, but I eventually got rejected. And I gave up after I got rejected. But I was just like, eh? I was so sure of myself, like first class, I have been running this brand for five years. They have to get me. Do you know who I am? I was even telling everybody, I'm going to the UK September. <laughs> they dashed me love letter. The way I cried, it was like five months of tears because I felt like I deserved it and I didn't get it right. But now that I've gotten the scholarship, I've studied, I'm done, I realized that. I wasn't even supposed to get it because when I read my my essays, it was not working. So the first thing I'll say is, yes, you've, you even applied for multiple scholarships. I'm really proud of you. For me, that's a lot of strength, right? You need multiple to scholarships, multiple love letters. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be honest with yourself. Those essays you sent are not perfect. So you need to be able to come to that realization that it was not perfect and maybe i need to learn more sometimes they are very good maybe maybe it's the wrong scholarship you applied for or there's too much competition but whatever it is see it as a commitment to self-development like okay how can i make this essay better do more research study more you might think that i've done all the research in this life trust me you've not because what i knew at the second time i applied was like a far cry from the first time and the first time I was even in a Zoom session with a program officer and I still got rejected, right? But I learned so much in one year. That's one. So learning more. Number two, growing. 
the person I was the second time I applied for Chibni was not the person I was the first time. In that one year, I continued developing myself. So I always tell people when they get rejected, focus more on self-development. What is it you're passionate about? Is it tourism? Is it creative industries? Is it agriculture? Is it medicine? Continue working on it. The more you develop yourself, the more you're increasing your chances year after year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, it will add up. I know someone that got rejected for Chevening, I think twice in a row, but she got selected this year and what she's doing in the UK is just crazy, like amazing strides. So I also believe that there's also the, the chance of it's not the right time. If I went the first time I applied for the scholarship I got, I would have studied the wrong course and I would have regretted it because now I'm like, what was I thinking? What was that about? But then I, I grew in one year. So just sit down, keep growing, keep developing yourself. It doesn't have to be scholarship, it can be assistantship. You can get a job opportunity. I know someone that got rejected for a scholarship, I think four years in a row. And then all of, all of a sudden, somebody recommended her for like this major job with an international company. She worked there for two years, after which she got a prestigious scholarship to Harvard. Mm. But if she did not get that job, maybe she wouldn't have gotten there. So sometimes delay is preparation for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not one of the things thou, yeah one of the they, things to, yeah you wanted to add something please add something. yeah one of the things i usually tell people is that where you currently are is like your preparation to where you're going so, so you need to take advantage of all of the experiences and some people get rejected from some scholarship not because you are not good enough let me give you an instance for um what's it called now this one erasmus modern scholarship they, they use grading system for erasmus modern scholarship some people score as high as 90. i've seen someone who got as high as 80 and was not selected you know why those who were ahead of the person scored 90 90 90 like or 89 or something and they can only pick just three people so that was what, not that your application was bad. If you put that scale on another scholarship, of course you get it. So of course you don't give up. You continue. Also, on that point, I think I like that you mentioned that you don't have to apply for only popular scholarships. Everybody yeah. does not for Chevening, Erasmus, Commonwealth. There's so many schools that offer in, their own scholarships. And in other countries. That, yeah, in other countries, so many funding opportunities that are not as popular as these things you can try this ones obviously but broaden your options right yeah. and i know someone that applied for erasmus chipping commonwealth all this mastercard three rejected the person but one said yes right mm-hmm. you only need one me. yes <laughs> for the rest. it's just yeah so i, I know that it's, it's the it'll just apply just apply but the truth is don't give up don't stop just keep applying that's all we can really say to you so I think we have a final question and then we can close for the day. So this is from our very special Toby and he has a lot of questions. Um, first, I'm a graduate of English language and literary studies. Oh, okay, my people. Emerged as the best student in my department. I have over five years of working experience and really wish to take my master's in either UK or US in English language. Okay, great. But then I don't know how to go about this. My questions, what setting do you think is best for my course? So when you say setting, does it give me country? And number two, do you think scholarship is better or assistantship? Number three, you mentioned something about top masters and the other side, <laughs> what makes the difference? So I think we should actually break this down a little. I think you've answered this question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Guys, a good GRA score is 300 plus, according to Ezekiel, right? So we can be one by one. The first thing he asked was, um, I don't know how to go about this. I think you've gone, walked through the process of assistantship, right? So in case mm-hmm. you need, my need to so, work. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me just quickly go through all those things again. I had a friend from way back. Um, the university days, she just came into the US two days ago. Okay. Yeah, she had English. English was her first degree. Okay. She was the best graduating student in her department, but not the first class. But she's in the US today for her PhD. Right. Now, what I would suggest for a seed writer, Toby, is that I think you should pursue more 
assistantship in the US, you would get it. The fact that you are even the best graduate student in your department is one of the things. And then when you say you have the experience for five years, what experience? Some experiences are not relevant to the program you want to go on. That's the truth. Not just experience. Um, have you been working? Uh, I don't know, advancing English language, what project or what exactly have you been doing? And then you should you should know where you're going to. If you contact a professor, what do you tell the professor that you what research, you know, or areas of interest do you tell the professor you want to do? Right. So I just wanted to consider assistantship. I don't know scholarship that really give programs in English language in UK. Um, I think you can Chevening, definitely. Okay, good. And even for more wealth, there's a communication for development. There's actually a lot of scholarships, so I'm sorry for English. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, like you said, it's a, you've decided on the course you want, so it's to find assistantships and scholarships, I think, for it. But I know Chevening, you can study English. Commonwealth, there's something called communications for development. And I know some schools that I know University of East Anglia also has a scholarship for literature, English literature. I don't know if that's, I think it's language you said, but it's just about finding the research. So I think personally, if I was going to advise you, I would say you should broaden your options, explore the assistantship that Ezekiel has mentioned, because obviously you know someone that's got an assistantship. I'm trying to look for the school. Okay. You probably just check it out. She sent it to me. And also explore scholarships. So search for scholarships for international students when you find them. And don't just do one country. It's not just UK or US. There are other countries that offer opportunities as well. I don't think it's going to list out all the schools for you, Toby. You're going ah, to I, can't, I can't do that. For, sorry. Please. Pity him. You know, he has given us so much of his time. But like, yeah, there's... I know you can get cheap, and you can get Commonwealth, and I know that there's many UK universities that give scholarship. There's also something called Think Big Bristol, um, as well, that offers scholarship in the UK. So the thing is, if your five years of working experience was in related to English, that's such a boost for scholarships because one, you invest, so you have academics on log. Number two, you have five years working experience in something impactful, or you've been doing side projects in something impactful, then you're a strong candidate for scholarships as well. That's what I think. But also broadening your options for assistantships, right? Yeah. So um, I would like to add, so Toby, you can check Fordham University. And it's not a comp it's not a must that you apply to, you know, the popular schools or the Ivy League schools in the US. When I tell people I'm in Clemson University, they don't know Clemson, but Clemson is big in this state. You know, it's not like one of the popular universities are there, but I mean, they give me funding that I'm here, right? So you can check Ford, Ford Arm University. And I just remember to mention something that in the US, we also have private universities. Okay. If you are looking for funding, private universities, you know, because they're after your money. <laughs> so, yes. So, oh my God, you yeah, <laughs> exactly. They are after your money. So, when you apply to a school in the US and it is a private university and you are looking for funding, just forget it. So, mm. you apply to public universities, you know, that are funded by their states, funded mm. by the United So, the thing is, the United States, or like, sorry, I don't even mention, they fund the education in this, this like, my school alone for a program, not this the entire school, for one program in school, they got funding of hundred million dollars. I mean the departments, not the school. There are other funding they still get from. When I read it, I'm like, the United States is crazy about education. They gave a department hundred million dollars. Trust me, that department will have plenty of scholarships and assistantship for students even for international students although the course is in the department is is in stem i know they fund a lot of stem projects and programs in the u.s so you hardly find that in social sciences you know so don't apply to private university and expect to get funding in the u.s yeah. so it has to be a public university and please don't apply to a community college now <laughs> 
If you apply to a community college, you get admission. That one is sure. They will never give you visa. You know why? Uh, community college is for those who are just 17, 18. You can't be 26. You can't even be 25 and you're applying to go to a community college and you have a bachelor's degree. The visa officer will never give you. They will think you just want to jump out. Anything you do in your application that is given any point thing that you want to jump out from their country to the US, they will deny you. When it says jump out, it means like, that he wants to leave and not come back. And you have the intention of not coming back, exactly. Yeah. They will deny you this one. Okay. So, yeah. I hope that clears. I don't know if I missed out any other part of this question. Uh... Uh, so better or not okay i think we both agreed that you should broaden his options it's about finding the funding don't bother about which one is better or the other i think you should just broaden your options you mentioned yeah. something about top masters and the other side i think it's asking for the difference between a top masters and yes a top masters is the one you you would do a thesis but it's not fully research Okay. You won't you won't be doing a lot of research. But if you're doing a research-based masters, trust me, you'll be doing a lot of research work. But for thought, you probably will just do the regular thesis at the end of your master's program when you're good, yeah. But for research, you probably might not even do you just do exam in some schools. Yeah, in some schools you just do exam and then move on. But of course you do papers and seminars and all those things. Okay. Okay, so we have one final question. I think the person is directed it at me. Um, I make, but if you have any tips for the person, you can also add. But the person says, I'm a graduate of architecture and have published a journal and I have working experience. What advice can you offer on how to navigate my scholarship journey since my course is practical? Hmm. So the first thing I'll say is that for the fact that you have a published paper, you are hot cake. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So the US is crazy about some things. When they see that you've published a paper, they give you attention. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I would advise you check this university, Ball State University, in Indianapolis, Ball State University. I have a friend who will also be traveling very soon. He got full assistantship and is an architect. Ball State University. My school, Czech Clemson, they also have an architecture. They have a program in architecture. So, Czech Clemson University. And, mm-hmm. you know, we have a very strong community of Nigerians here. One of the things that helped me when I came in to settle down properly is the community of Nigerians. They helped me to settle. They helped me do for accommodation. They were help moving me around my account. Right, so it's also good to go to. I'm not saying you should limit your options, but when there's a good Nigerian community in that place, it means it's a good school to. So, and the Nigerians here are growing. So, you check out programs in my school. Yeah. Check out programs in my school. Okay. Yeah. Um, the person says, uh, the only thing I just have to add is. Um, basically, a lot of the things they are shared, right? Um, try to improve your experiences if you want scholarships in addition. So, like you said, um, try to gather experiences, maybe volunteer, create projects, um, join conferences. Try to build as much of as much experience that you can garner so that you can project yourself as somebody that really cares. Try to do things that you can talk about in the essays. It's not that they are doing them for the scholarship or it really helps because I don't really know much about you beyond the fact that obviously you've published a journal, which like you said, is great for research and assistantships. But if you want scholarships for thought masters, you need a lot of significant work experience that can help you as well. Okay, so I don't think we have any other question. Um, Final words from Ezekiel. So for anybody that is a novice, what would you say is your ultimate advice for anybody here watching that I'm just new, I'm just hearing so much information. Oh my God, I want a scholarship. What can I, what's your ultimate advice for anybody that is a novice? Yeah, so when they say information is power, it is not a joke. <laughs> Inform, the, yeah, the information you get can transform your life. 
to be honest. So if you're a novice here, I want you to be the way you are always interested to eat, maybe shawarma or maybe that food you like to eat. Have that, that kind of appetite for scholarship information. See, I I read when I was also looking for things like this. You need to see me on Twitter. You think I'm doing you know, all this dance because on Twitter? No, I'm digging deep into some tweets that they've written many years ago. You know, there are some threads on Twitter that will be so long that you just quit and I will go. When I found when I found mine, because my course is not that popular, the program I want to do is not popular. It was down, down, down. I went, I read the whole of the thread. Every single thing. How to wow. email professors, how to write, you know, a cold emails, how to do all this and so. Go to Twitter and follow people with no road. Those who have done it before, those who have gotten scholarship, read everything. That, I mean, they are sweets. I'm not the kind of, of course, I'll be sharing information, but I'm not, I don't put out so many tweets on Twitter, but speak to this. You don't need to speak with them. Just go through their tweets. You will see all the things they said. Now, YouTube is another resource. I think there are about a billion videos on how to get, <laughs> like, ultimate. just, Masterclass. <laughs> it's, I mean, turn and left, right, up and down. You will see videos on assist. Just type assistantship in the US. You will see hundreds of videos that yeah. you can watch. And the thing is, there are a lot of amazing guys that have broken down all these things. Very easy and very simple for you. And just to quickly mention it again, how do you get this thing? First of all, when you look for a school, don't just go to, just don't just go and apply. Speak with the graduate school first. If they are funding, go and look for a professor. Search through the faculty members in that department. And once you're able to get a professor, you are 95%. You have that chance that you're going to get admission. Not only admission, you also get funding. So try and get a professor to you know, accept you into their lab or as their student, and you're going to get the funding. So just be open to as many information. And then you should begin to join. I joined some WhatsApp groups. What they do is share scholarships. Right, so you need to join community of young people who share scholarship information. Just have those people around you, right, and then commit yourself to personal okay. development, so that when these opportunities come, you are able to plug yourself into it, and then you're able to get it. All right, thank you so much for your time. Like I'm sure you've learned, I've learned a lot. I'm sure everyone here has learned so much. Like it's still, it's still such a huge testimony. You being a viewer now, you've been such an effective masterclass coach. Like <laughs> it's lovely to see. You know, so, so the thing is, the kind of commitment I gave to my visa, I'm now I can coach you or not to get <laughs> because I can't, I can't count the number of mock interviews I did. Yeah. I mean, lots of interviews, lots, because I thought just get admission and go and sleep, but then I realized that no. Do you know that some people get denied up to five, six times? They still did not give up. There's a guy on our WhatsApp group. The guy just got his visa, seventh attempt. There was one that got it on the ninth attempt. That's why if you give up, I mean. Yes, I think that's the ultimate. Two key things I've gotten from you. Number one, information is power. Do as much yeah. research and keep consuming keep developing yourself and then number two as well I've lost don't, my give don't give up yes thank you for that if you don't don't give up keep you will chop plenty big fat but don't give up exactly. guys um if you want to watch the recording of this video head over to our youtube channel afm yeah. Street. i think we've been dropping it like several there are lots of materials valuable materials on that what youtube channel it? please check them out and then we have other videos as well, just like this with other scholars. You can also follow us on social media at AFM Stories. And you can also follow Ezekiel as well. I think your name is Ezekiel. I, I don't, my name is just Ezekiel Adesha, anywhere. Ezekiel Adesha, anywhere. All right. All right, guys, it was so great having you. And congrats to you that stayed this long. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I'm yeah. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everyone.